Crypto is supposed to be all about decentralization, right? The truth is, while it may have started out with a libertarian-style message of defeating the establishment, it's no longer really about that. Yes, there are undercurrents beneath the crypto space where these messages thrive. But in reality, many top crypto projects are far more like businesses than open source networks. This is the story of what happens when the idea of decentralization is pitted against a burgeoning empire and how decentralization made a comeback. Let's get it. Once upon a time in a land far away, there was a community of artists, friends, and neighbors. They lived happily together and were delighted to share each other's lives with one another. The land wasn't perfect though. There were tales of dastardly acts and people who broke the laws and guidelines of the community that were set before the members. But all in all, it was a harmonious place marked with awe and wonder. Sometimes at night, the children of the community would gather round as the elders told stories from ancient times about the beginning of the community. They were told the wonderful stories of creation of the community structure and financial system. But as you would expect, the younger generation didn't care about the financial system. They wanted to hear the tales of bravery, knights, and dragons. One tale involved a dragon as old as the sun, one who had a mighty roar and fierce claws. The dragon had already defeated many other lands and took them as his own. Everywhere he went, the people were scared, for when the dragon descended upon their lands, it was relentless, destroying everything in its path. One evening, as our beloved community was winding down for bed, they heard a terrible noise. It was the terrifying dragon, and it was real. It had finally come to their community. The townspeople were so scared, they did not know where to turn. The dragon announced it would be taking over the lands, and there was nothing the people could do about it. The evil creature removed all of the political figures and leadership from the royal table, and any who were not forcibly removed left on their own, brokenhearted. The community wallowed in its pity, but then there was an idea that spread like wildfire from one person to the next. You see, the dragon had overtaken the land, but the community was made up of the people, and the people could not be overtaken. They hatched a plan to escape the dragon's clutches by collectively moving to another place. This place would not be able to be touched by the dragon. It was theirs, and they called it Hive. Hello and welcome to BitBoy Crypto, your one-stop shop for all things related to Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. I make videos on this channel almost every single day and usually maybe twice a day, if you're lucky. If you like what you hear or see, then please make sure to hit that subscribe button and click the bell to turn on notifications. If you'd like to take the conversation even further, ask me questions, or just generally chit-chat, then please make sure to join my Telegram group, The Bit Squad. So, I'm guessing you figured out by now who is who in the story. The land is the Steam community, the dragon is Justin's son, and the new land is Steam's new hard fork, Hive. Well, I said that last part in the video, so I hope you got it. I hope you guys like that little fairy tale analogy. I thought it would be something different than my regular content. Let me know if you liked it. I used to do a lot of creative stuff on this channel in the early days, but everybody hated it, so maybe I'm not very creative. But anyways, guys, back to our story here. The Steam community is a passionate group of people who do not believe in censorship. They believe in ultimate decentralization. They believe that each person in their community should get their say in the governance of the project. So when Tron founder Justin Sun announced that he, along with the Tron Foundation, was buying Steemit, a lot of people in the community were very concerned. Tron itself has struggled with being decentralized. There are many rumors and stories from the front lines of the community about how the leadership of the project actually pulls all the strings, even for the individual SRs of the community. The Steam community, though, did not want a hostile takeover by Justin Sun. But a few weeks ago, all of their worst fears were realized when Justin Sun, Binance, Poloniex, and Huobi all conspired to completely overtake the Steam blockchain. Now, I do want to say that since all of that happened, CZ from Binance has apologized and admitted that he was wrong for using people's Steam on Binance to support the overthrow of governance. In fact, 
he admitted all of this on my podcast, Beards and Bitcoins, a few weeks ago. If you want to check out that interview to get the skinny on the backstory of this whole entire thing, then make sure to click the link above. But the Steam community was very upset, and rightfully so. And once this occurred, there was no going back. The community would not stand for it any longer. To really drive this home, the day this occurred, four employees, including the head of communications, Andrew Levine, left Steam. And I actually had a chance to interview Andrew about six months ago or so, and I can tell you he was very passionate about Steam and excited for the direction that Steam it was going in. The interview, unfortunately, never got published or released because it was for a conference and they never released any of the interviews I did for them, which was very disappointing, but that's a different story. The point is, Andrew's a good guy. And for him to up and leave like that, it shows how Justin Sun's hostile takeover affected the community. But the thing about a decentralized community is that you can't really destroy it. It's like destroying an idea. I mean, this is the whole basis for the Bitcoin network in any peer-to-peer -peer community. As long as there are two people committed to keeping it going, then it will run. But that should catch you up to date on where we were going into today, because today was a big day for Steam, or now it goes by a different name. Honestly, this is a great story because in my opinion, it shows what some of our communities are capable of. So the leaders of the Steam community decided that the best way to get out from under Justin Sun and to escape his grasp was to move the entire community to a new blockchain. Wow, what, what a novel idea. They've officially now hard forked the blockchain and created a new code. This new network will be called Hive. And despite the fact that Justin Sun bought Steemit with plans of integrating it with the Trump blockchain and with Steam eventually becoming a TRX token, now he's absolutely powerless. And without just straight up pumping the coin, who knows what this could actually do to the Steam price. In addition, the Steam that Justin Sun does own is part of something called the Development Fund, and those coins will not be moving over to the new blockchain, which means that none of Justin Sun's tokens in the Development Fund will be worth anything. Hive also has certain governance rules that are now put in place to prevent exchanges from overpowering the governance of the network, like what occurred a couple weeks ago. And I think this shows that the former Steemit community, the new Hive community, has learned from their previous mistakes. I think this bodes well for the future of the network. Steam community members, business owners, users, and over 30 developers helped to drive this move. There was virtually no one in the community who wanted Justin Sun anywhere near the project. So it seems as if pretty much the entire community supported this move, which is gonna basically render the old version of Steam and the Steam blockchain pretty much completely useless. In February, Justin Sun and the Tron Foundation acquired Steam and Inc., the main developer for the project, giving them control over its development. Justin Sun quickly was able to amass a fortune of Steam tokens that should be worth millions of dollars. But with this move to the new high blockchain, the community has basically blocked Sun from ever being able to get close to their full value. In fact, as of right now, his stake is now only worth about $200,000, far less than millions. And it's unlikely he will be able to even dump those coins anytime soon. So what's the lesson here? Well, you can't just go buying up every company in crypto like this is a game of Monopoly. You won't always be able to get that get out of jail free card from the community chest. Justin Sun is developing quite the reputation for trying to buy results. But in this case, he's the one left holding the bag. But now it's your turn. What do you think about this whole situation? Who is right and who is wrong? Will you support the move from Steam to the Hive blockchain? Please let me know by dropping your comments down below in the comment section. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to smash the like button and hit subscribe to become a member of the fastest growing community in crypto, the BitSquad. We just cruised through 28,000 subscribers and are heading straight towards 30K in the next couple of weeks. Thank you so much for all the support and thank you so much for watching this video. Have a blessed day. Big boy out. Thank <laughs> you.